So this week we're getting more into some of the nitty-gritty parts of experiments. So as a quick review, um, I'll talk about independent and dependent variables, and then we'll spend the majority of this short lecture on within groups uh, versus between or uh, independent groups. There is a longer lecture on variables, and that has a pretty decent discussion of independent versus dependent. So if that's what you're looking for, go to that other lecture. It'll have more information there. This is supposed to serve as a refresher. So as a refresher, an independent variable is whatever the researcher will manipulate. So there might be several levels of the independent variable. So perhaps I have an independent variable called stress. In one level of that independent variable, students are exposed to a high level of stress. So maybe I make them give a speech in front of 500 people. Maybe we have another level of stress um, that's supposed to be kind of an intermediate level where they give a speech, um, but they get to give it to a camera. So they don't actually have to stand up in front of people. And then we have a third level of this independent variable where they don't have to give a speech at all. They just sit quietly in a room and wait for the study to continue. So that would be one independent variable that we would call stress with three levels. So essentially we have a high stress, a medium stress, and then a low or no stress level. The independent variable, theoretically, should cause changes in the dependent variable. So the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. So maybe we say that stress will impact um, performance on some kind of math exam. So you stress these people out, or you, you, know, you put them in one of your three levels of your independent variables. So maybe they have high stress, medium stress, low stress. And then you have them complete a short math test. So the performance on the math test depends on which stress condition they were in. So you would think then, so your hypothesis would be uh, students in the high stress condition would do more poorly on the math test. So again, the dependent variable in this uh, example is the performance on a math test. And it depends on which level of the independent variable they are exposed to. So again, Independent variables might have multiple levels. That is what is manipulated by the researcher. A dependent variable is what changes as a reaction to or in response to that independent variable. We'll talk about control variables more uh, down the line. Don't really worry about those for right now. Independent, dependent variables are really the crux of what we're dealing with uh, here in these first few weeks, so make sure you get that distinction down before you move forward to dealing with control variables. We have this additional distinction of independent groups designs or within groups designs. And this is really just talking about what uh, the participants in the study go through. So if you have, um, so you have your independent level, or your, your independent variable, excuse me, with two levels. If you um, say you have 100 participants, you randomly assign every single person to one and only one of those two levels, you have an independent group's design. So say that you uh, walk into the classroom and I'm conducting a study um, on stress again. So I have one condition, which would be one level of my independent variable, where you have, um, I give you unlimited time to take an exam. Uh, say it's a statistics e exam or some kind of math test. As much time as you need, just do the best that you can, take your time, no worries. So this is one level. And another level, I give you 10 minutes to finish this 100 question test. So on one condition, as much time as you want to finish this test. The other condition, only 10 minutes. So say you walk into this classroom and I flip a coin. Heads, you go into the no time limit group. Tails, you only get 10 minutes group. And I just keep assigning people as they come into the door, one group or the other. You participate in one and only one condition. This is an independent group's design. So here, our independent variable, stress, with two
two levels, so the no time limit versus the time limit, and we want to see how that affects performance on that 100 item math test. So that performance would be our dependent variable. So the fact that participants are only assigned to one of these study conditions makes it independent groups. So you can kind of think of it as uh, they're independent, they are two separate groups, there's no overlap there. Uh, and you will, so this is where random assignment comes in handy so that you can assure, well, you can hope that uh, your two groups are approximately equal. So you have equal numbers of females and males and um, different ethnicities are scattered throughout your groups and all of those good things. So you have two separate groups. Then we also have a within groups design. So this is a little bit different. Um, I think probably this most often occurs with drug trials. So say um, you have a cancer patient um, and you get them into a drug trial. Well, if you had an independent groups design, this person would be in one of two conditions, right? So maybe they would get a placebo or they could get this life-saving drug. That's kind of unethical because you have this drug that could save their life. They think that they're getting it, yet they're getting nothing, right? So in, in drug trials and things like that, to get around that, you know, those ethical problems, we'll do what's called a within groups design. So this means uh, maybe for four months or something, uh, you get assigned to one group, and then you'll have a two month off period, and then you would switch and you would be in the other condition for six months. So every individual person would eventually participate in every single part of that drug or of that, um, of that study. So if they were first in the placebo condition, they would be on the placebo for whatever period of time and then they would switch to the drug condition. Now that is really great because you get uh, information, they're the exact same person, right? So you can compare, you essentially have a baseline. Um, you can tell how well they were doing when they were on the placebo and you can see how much better they get once they start receiving this drug or maybe they even get worse, we don't know. So within groups, the same people participate in all levels of your independent variable. Independent groups, you have two separate groups, each one participates in only one level of your independent variable. And that's the distinction here between independent groups and within groups designs.